Hadith 28, The Obligation of Following the Sunnah On the authority of Abu Najih al-Arbad ibn Sariya, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave us a sermon by which our hearts were filled with fear and tears came to our eyes. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, it is as though this is a farewell sermon, so counsel us. He, peace be upon him, said, I counsel you to have taqwa, fear of Allah, and to listen and obey your leader, even if a slave were to become your emir. Verily, he among you who lives long will see great controversy. So you must keep to my sunnah and to the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the rightly guided caliphs, those who guide to the right way. Cling to it stubbornly, beware of newly invented matters in the religion, for verily every bid'ah innovation is misguidance. Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'al. So the Prophet gave this sermon and the companions they saw it is like a farewell sermon. They thought this is going to be one of the last times that they hear the Prophet, peace be upon him, speak. And they started crying and they took it very seriously. So they asked him, they said, give us some advice. And this is not normal advice. This is parting advice. They said, if this, if this is the last time we see you, if this is the last time we get an opportunity to hear something from you, we need some very important parting advice. What do we do after you're gone? So the Prophet, peace be upon him, gives them two tips of advice, gives them two recommendations. The first one he says, have taqwa. Have the fear of Allah. Be conscious of Allah at all times. And this is something which a Muslim must have. But then the second piece of advice he gave was very unique. Something which they've not really heard before because he wants to warn them about something that they're going to experience, something that every Muslim will probably experience at some point in their life. And that is to be careful about how you follow your leaders. And he said, make sure that you obey the leaders that have been put in authority over you. And then he specified and he said, even if, if it's a slave, a slave is basically someone who in that Arab community at that time was considered to be among the lowest class of society. So if a slave was put in charge over the Muslim community, some people would have in the back of their minds that, I'm not going to listen to this slave. This is a person who uh, is you know, different from me. This is a person who's at the lowest level of society. Why should I have to listen to what they say? But what the Prophet peace be upon him is doing in this case is he's actually defining the importance of authority in a community. And he's saying, if you want to be a strong community, you need to respect the authority that you have in that society. So whoever is the leader, you need to listen to them. You need to obey them. As long as they're not ordering you to do something which is against Islam, as long as they're not ordering you to do something which goes against what the teachings of Allah and His Messenger, you follow what they're saying. And this is really one of the detrimental things in communities. Whenever people don't want to follow their leader because they feel, no, I think this should be done in another way. And the leader says, no, we need, we're going to do it this way. You said, no, but I think it should have been done that way. And if you don't do it my way, then I'm not going to listen to what you have to say. And the Prophet is setting this precedent that if you want to have a strong community, if you want to have a strong society, you need to listen and you need to obey the leader who's been placed in charge of you. It doesn't matter what you think about their personal dress. It doesn't matter what you think about their appearance. It doesn't matter what you think about they're this way or they're that way. As long as they're a legitimate leader and they're not asking you to do something that's against Islam, we need to develop this quality in us that we're going to listen to the leader. And you see that this will make or break a society. When, when the people, when Muslims follow their leader, they follow their imam, the one who's, in, who's placed in authority over them, you see that that group is a successful group. And when you see that people don't follow, you see that that group is a failure of a group. And you see this example in the story of Talut. If you look in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, it talks about one of the people who was appointed as a prophet, Talut or Saul. When he marched out with the army and he told them, he said, you're not allowed to drink from this river except a little tiny handful, maximum. The majority of his people, they didn't listen to him. The majority of his own soldiers, they defected and they didn't listen to his command and they weren't able to even stand firm on that day when they had to go into battle. This is something that we find all the time. But it's not just any leader that you listen to. There's a lot of corrupt leaders out there. 
So it's very important to differentiate between leaders which are righteous and leaders which are irreligious, leaders which are destructive, they're tyrannical, and you don't want to be following them. So he said, peace be upon him, that you make sure to follow my sunnah, follow my way when it comes to leadership, and follow my way when it comes to deciding whether a leader is on the right path or the wrong path. So if they're following my sunnah the way that I've taught you Islam, that means they're on the right path. And then he said, follow the sunnah or the example or the way of the khulafa, al-rashidin, the rightly guided leaders who are going to be coming after me, like Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali. May Allah be pleased with all of them. These were examples of leaders who followed in the footsteps of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And these are the leaders that need to be followed. But then he said, and he said, follow their way and make sure you take what they teach you and you need to bite down on it. Basically what he's saying is, you bite down on the sunnah. You bite down on my way and on the way of these righteous followers, these righteous leaders who came after me, and you hold on to it so firmly. If anyone comes and tells you to do something contrary to what I've taught you or to what these leaders have come with, don't listen to them. Just reject them. You don't have to follow them and you don't have to obey them. But as long as they're doing something which is in accordance with Islam, you follow it and you stick to it. And that's going to help your community. And the last statement he made in this regard is very important. He said, you watch out for innovative matters. What's called bid'ah in Islam. An innovation in Islam means that it's an innovation in the religion. Something that someone is introducing into the religion that was not part of the religion. So if somebody comes and introduces a new prayer and says we have a five unit prayer for one of the Zuhr prayers or for the Isha prayer or any other prayer, there's no such thing as a five unit prayer. There's no such thing as a 25 unit prayer. Even though you might think that you know what, this is actually more worship than a two unit prayer. But it's something that's innovated and has no basis in the religion. And if you take it to be as something part of the religion, this is that's gonna, something that's going to guide you away from the path. So religion is not based upon people's whims or fancies. It's not even based upon sincere intentions that people may have and they try to introduce something into it. So we need to be very cautious about how we practice our religion. We need to make sure that we always go back to the Quran and we always go back to the sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him, which is his way. Anything which is an innovation that's not part of a religion, anything that's a technological innovation, anything that has something to do with stylistic or our worldly life, that's not an innovation in the religion. But a bid'ah is something that someone is introducing and telling you that this is part of the religion such that if you don't do it, there's something wrong with you. That is something that the Prophet warned us uh, about and we need to be very clear that we stay away from all of these things. And this is a way where our Muslim community will be kept in check and it will stay on the right path as the final religion and the final manifestation of the message of Allah, the revelation of Allah to all mankind until the day of judgment. We ask Allah to protect us from innovations. We ask Allah to allow us to follow the rightly guided leadership. And we ask Allah to make us among the people who are worthy of having righteous and just leaders placed in power over us. I mean...